On the morning of July 14, 1789, the city of Paris was in a state of alarm. From this point, the monarchy of Louis XVI was in major difficulties. As the majority of Frenchmen composed their differences and united behind an attempt to destroy the privileged establishment of the church and the state. The fall of Bastille was the flashpoint of the French Revolution. A series of major political turmoils shook the nation thereafter. On one hand, there were around 4,595 political prisoners held in Paris and on the other hand, under the command of Napoleon Bonaparte, the French army continued their victory lap. By 1815, Napoleon's rule was over and he abdicated for the second time during the famous Hundred Days after the restoration of King Louis XVIII. Charles X became the new king after the death of King Louis XVIII in 1824. The Republican movement attained the highest peak at that point of time. Everest the Galois, son of Nicolas Gabriel Galois and Adelaide Maril de Mante, was highly motivated by his parents and became an ardent Republican at a very young age. In 1827, he enrolled himself in the mathematics class of M. Viennar and fell in love with the subject in his own way. The next year, at the age of 17, he took the examination of École Polytechnique but failed. Apart from being a school of high repute, Galois was interested in École due to the strong political movement that existed among the students. Back to his old school, Galois studied Legendre's geometry and the works of Lagrange under the guidance of Louis Richard. On parallel, his political movements were also running in full swing and eventually he went to jail for a number of times. In 1829, Galois had his first paper published in Annals des Mathematiques on Continued Fractions. July 2, 1829 had been a black day in Galois' life. His father, who has been a mayor of bourg la reine committed suicide by hanging himself in public. The priest of bourg la reine forged Mayor Galois' name on malicious forged epigrams directed at Galois' own relatives. Galois' father was a highly respected person in his community and the scandal that ensued was more than he could stand. A few weeks after his father's death, he appeared for the entrance test of Ecole for the second time and surprisingly failed again. In this context, E. T. Bell wrote in his famous treatise, Main of Mathematics, that people not fit to sharpen his pencils sat on judgment of him. Galois continued his work on the theory of equations and sent Kochi some of his works. He then learned from bulletin the Feruzak of a posthumous article by Abel, which overlapped with a part of his work. Galois then took Koch's advice and submitted a new article on the condition that an equation be solvable by radicals in February 1830. The paper was sent to Fourier, the secretary of the Paris Academy, to be considered for the grand prize in mathematics. Unfortunately, Fourier died in April 1830 
and Galois paper was never subsequently found and so never considered for the prize. Galois, after reading Abel's and Jacobi's papers, worked on the theory of elliptic functions and abelian integrals. He published three papers in Bulletin de Ferouzac in April 1830 with support of Jacques Sturm. However, he learned in June that the prize of the Academy would be awarded jointly to Abel posthumously and Jacobi. His own work had never been considered. July 1830 saw a revolution. Charles Taine fled France. There were rioting in the streets of Paris and the director of Equal Normal, where Galois was studying then, M. Gignault, locked the students in to avoid them taking part. Galois tried to scale the wall to join the rioting, but failed. In December 1830, M. Gignault wrote newspaper articles attacking the students. And Galois wrote a reply in the Gazette des Ecoles attacking M. Gignault for his actions in locking the students into the school. For this later, Galois was expelled and he joined the artillery of the National Guard, a republican branch of the militia. The story of this teenager came to a very cruel end on March 31, 1832. Galois was killed in a duel at the age of 21 only. There have been numerous speculations as to what may have been the cause of his death and it seems that the most likely explanation could be that he fell in love with his physician's daughter and it was at her instigation that he challenged someone for a duel and was, as a result, killed. While some believe that the duel was organized by his political opponents to eliminate him. The sadder part of the story is that Galois didn't receive any medical attention for many hours after he was shot. Maybe this giant of mathematics could have been saved had help arrived on time. It was only years after his death when the letters and manuscripts that Galois wrote to his brother and friend Chevalier just before he died were published by Liaoville in 1846 that the world started revering this genius. The theory that Galois outlined in this mere 66 pages of his letters is now called Galois theory. The night before he died, Galois somehow sensed that his end was near and wrote many letters, both mathematical and political, to his numerous friends and brothers. The famous mathematician Herman Well described these letters as This letter, judged by the novelty and profundity of ideas it contains, is perhaps the most substantial piece of writing in the whole literature of mankind. <laughs>